Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure and bonding in polymers. You should then be able to explain why polymers are solids at room temperature. Now, polymers have thousands of uses, and I'm showing you some examples here. We find polymers in disposable razors, plastic cups, and plastic drinks bottles. In this video, we're looking at the bonding in polymers. Now, the first key idea is that polymers are very large molecules. We make a polymer by joining together thousands of small, identical molecules, and we call these starting molecules monomers. Monomers are often alkene molecules, and you'll find out more about alkenes in the organic chemistry topic. A good example of an alkene is ethene, which I'm showing you here. As I said, we form a polymer by joining together thousands of monomer molecules, so I'm showing you that here for ethene. Now, I'm only joining five ethene molecules, but this gives you the general idea. So here are the ethene molecules joining together to form the polymer. In this case, the polymer is called polyethene. Now, there are several key points about this that you need to learn. Firstly, the alkene monomer has a double covalent bond between the carbon atoms, and I'm showing those bonds in green. However, in the polymer, we have single covalent bonds between the carbon atoms, and I'm showing those bonds in orange. You need to remember that all of the covalent bonds in polymers are extremely strong. Now, students sometimes ask what happens at the ends of a polymer molecule. At GCSE, you don't need to know that, and you won't be asked about it in the exam. Now, there's one problem with drawing a polymer such as this, and that is that there are lots of atoms and covalent bonds to draw. So scientists usually represent polymers in a shorthand way, like this. This is called the repeating unit. There are three important details about the repeating unit that you need to learn. Firstly, the repeating unit shows a single covalent bond between the carbon atoms, and we can see that here. Secondly, the covalent bonds on either side have to extend out of the brackets. This tells us that the polymer molecule extends out in both directions. Lastly, the lowercase n represents a large number. This tells us that the polymer contains a very large number of repeating units joined together. OK, now most polymers are solids at room temperature, and you need to be able to explain why. In order to explain this, we need to look at the forces acting between polymer molecules. I'm showing you three polymer molecules here. Between the polymer molecules, there are intermolecular forces of attraction, and the word intermolecular means acting between molecules. Now, the intermolecular forces of attraction between polymer molecules are relatively strong. In order to melt a polymer, we have to break these intermolecular forces. Breaking the intermolecular forces takes a lot of energy, and this means that polymers have a high melting point. And because of this, most polymers are solids at room temperature. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision Workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. 